Hey guys, so I hope you saw my video from earlier this morning about those very, very concerning uh, tremors that are being felt again, and some of the graphs in Europe are even feeling them. Very diminished though, very diminished, showing that it is definitely North America that is moving. It has to be. Personally, that is the only thing I can think it could be. Um, I do not know which direction. I was thinking it was moving northeast, but then one of my subscribers said that the North American Craton is actually moving southwest. So I don't know exactly which way it's moving. I thought it was moving northeast, but, you know, it could be moving. But it's moving. It's definitely moving. And it looks like Old Faithful, hey, good timing. We got a good little eruption going right now at Old Faithful. <clears throat> Let's see how big it gets. Up there, that's not that big. Oh, up there. Oh, it's getting there. Man, they really need to wash the screen right here. Wow, yeah, that's actually quite large. Nice. That was perfect timing. All right, now it's stopping. Okay, so first off, guys, I would like to tell you guys, because some people, I noticed, you know, like on some of my other videos, someone thought I was using the same graph over and over and over again and using the same times or whatever he said. I just want to lay it out for you guys. I don't care what anybody in the entire world says when you're in seismology. Basically, one of the first things you learn as a seismologist is how to correlate earthquake data, right? How to learn the locations of an earthquake and the timing of an earthquake. Do you want to know how they do that? Well, when they see an event, be it a tremor or an earthquake, which tremor and an earthquake, technically they're two separate things. Tremors can last days, hours, in rare cases even months. Earthquakes are just earthquakes. And I do have to say, though, that the first thing you learn in seismology is how to correlate seismic data. Now, how you do that is if you see an event, whether it be a tremor or an earthquake, and when you see an event, you go to the neighboring graphs. And if the times correlate with the original graph you're looking at, you discovered something coming from underground. Because think of it real quick. Think of it. Let's say there's a graph in West Yellowstone. And then let's say there's a graph in South Yellowstone. And let's say there's a graph in East Yellowstone. Let's say in West Yellowstone, there was an earthquake at, let's say, 2100 UTC. Then, to see if that truly was an earthquake or, God knows, a footstep or something, who knows, to truly see if that was an earthquake and an underground event, you go to the neighboring graphs. So, let's say the guy saw a 21 UTC, an earthquake, in West Yellowstone. So, he'll go to the South Yellowstone seismograms. And if there's also an earthquake mark there as well at 2100 and also in East Yellowstone, then it definitely is showing an earthquake and something coming from underground. Now, usually when an event only happens on one graph and no other graphs, usually that is surface noise. Could be wind, could be bison playing soccer, you know, God knows what. It could be even electronic noise. But when you see something, and, and this is what you do. You have to correlate the times, guys. If you don't believe me, if you don't believe other people, if you don't believe what you're seeing, take a graph, any graph, anything you find. If you see a tremor, look at the times, guys. Look at the exact time that it started and the exact time that it stopped. Now go to the neighboring graphs around the area and look at the time as well. If the same thing shows on each graph, it is picking up the same event. Now, let's say one graph is in Washington State and the other is in Virginia State. And they're both pick up the same exact activity at the same time. That cannot be surface noise nor electronic noise, guys. That can't, that's impossible. But then again, I thought it was impossible for a tremor to be felt over the entire United States. Personally, I think the whole plate is shifting. So I just refreshed the heliplots. Yep, there's Cuba. Dominican Republic, Jamaica, 
Notice the timing again. Notice right here around the same exact timing. Notice that. And if you guys email me at benferriolo at yahoo.com, I'll leave my email in the description box below. I usually do. Email me at that email address if you would like to see this data yourself. Don't just take my word for it, guys, because they do not keep an archive for this. They do not keep an archive for this. So, that's why I saved the images myself. And I did it last night at 7 p.m., and I'm going to do it again tonight at 6 p.m. So I'm going to have both days of data. So if you guys would like to see it and do some digging of your own, please email me, and I will send you the data. But you can see a stark difference between earlier in the day and when the tremor started. And you notice that the farther away from wherever this tremor is happening, like let's say Germany and Norway, that's pretty far from North America, right? It shows it starting a few hours later, but it's still the same activity. But if, you, if you're in the United States and only look at the United States graphs, they all start at basically the same exact times. And some of them are extremely strong, too. Let's go all the way down here. Yeah, a lot of them are strong. All right. Let's see. There's South Dakota, guys. There's Greenland. Greenland's feeling it very strong. It is getting stronger right now. Puerto Rico is feeling it a tiny bit. Let's see. There's Arizona. Arizona's feeling it. Indiana. Tennessee. Michigan, Ohio, and notice how it's only the Western Hemisphere that is feeling this. China, Russia, and the Eastern Hemisphere, they're not really feeling this at all. Idaho, New York, Texas, Virginia, Oregon, Montana, Alabama, Wyoming, Kansas. And in my last video, I went through every single graph. I'm not going to do that again, but just as an example, you can see all of these. Look at the bold lines. These bold lines right here. They all picked up at the same exact time, and that is how you correlate and see if something is coming from underground, and Maine is showing it very strong. But guys, that is how you learn if something is not surface-related or electronic-related. The fact that this shows on, I'm sorry to say it again, guys, but the fact that this shows on every single graph in the United States, literally every graph in the United States, and it starts at the same time on each graph. That cannot be surface noise. That cannot be electronic noise. That cannot be bison playing football. Guys, that is impossible. No surface noise, no wind, no storms. Nothing can spread itself out that far to show a vibration over the whole United States. And even showing in Europe, too. I mean, I'm still in shock. I, I'm still in shock. I really am that this is even happening. So let's go to the long period vertical of today. I refreshed it, and it is still going strong, guys. But it looks like it's starting to diminish just a little bit. Because up here, it was a little stronger, so it might be starting to die down now. I hope it does, because, man, this is pretty crazy. And just for shits and giggles, let's go to Chrome Mountain again and see how that's doing again. Crow Mountain is going off the charts. Oh, yes. Everywhere is going off the charts. And guess what? Let's go to Indian Meadows, Wyoming. Indian Meadows, Wyoming. Right here. Look at this. Oh, and guess what, guys? Guess what? It is almost exactly a month since the last long period tremor. Remember the last long period tremor that was a felt from Alaska to Virginia? Almost like the same exact thing is here. Not, not, not here on this graph, but you know what I meant up here on the long period graph right here it's almost the same exact thing except this is way stronger than the november 28th tremor way stronger guys way freaking stronger but still it is almost exactly because remember it's november 28th and 29th here it's no uh, december 26th and 27th there's only a day difference that it's almost been exactly a month which is very weird I doubt that has anything to do with anything. I just thought that was weird that it's been exactly a month. By Indian Meadows, Wyoming, the past low-frequency tremors that have been occurring barely have showed on Indian Meadows, Wyoming. But we go to today on December 27, 2017, and you can see those jagged edges up and down, up and down, the whole graph. It has never showed on Indian Meadows, Wyoming. I mean, once in a great while, like on November 28th, it did a little bit. But this is the strongest that I have ever seen it on, on uh, what is it? 
on Indian Meadows, Wyoming. Okay, guys, let's go run. Yeah, I'd be getting the hell out of there, guys. <laughs> no thanks. Okay, so let's go to earth.newschool.net. Oh, yeah, by the way, guys, uh, one of the people that commented on my previous video, if you haven't seen it, please go watch it, the one I just uploaded before this one. Um, the guy commented and said that some of the links in the description box weren't working. Well, I, I think uh, when I copied and pasted it, it cut off the link somehow. So I, uh, I copied and pasted it again and make sure all the links are correct, and they are. So that should be good. All right, let's see the current SO2 missions in the United States right now. Let's go here to go to Kim. Turn off the wind flow. We do not need the wind flow. Wow, that's a lot of carbon monoxide. Oh, wow. 2375 parts per billion. Wow. Those must be those wildfires. But that looks like it's coming from the ocean. That's weird. Okay. SO2. Let's see here, guys. Yeah, we got some stationary plumes up here, up here. Big concentration over here, but no stationary plumes, it seems. But, it looks like, let me go back in time and see what it's doing. Are there any stationary points? Yes, there are. There are some stationary points, I see. Okay, so there are three stationary points that I am looking at right now that seem to be emitting from the ground. Let's go to now. Okay, right here is one. So let's go to Google Earth. Just want to see where all this is taking place. Okay, so no, I don't care about that. Come on, there we go. Okay, so let's see. The first stationary point I want to look at is right here. It's 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 diminishing right now, the emission from this area, but I still want to check why it even happened in the first place. Let's see. Where is that? Let's see. Let's see here. Okay. Where is this? This is pretty much Boise, Idaho. Straight smack dab Boise, Idaho. Okay, so that's Boise. Next one. Right, let's see. It was right up in this area right here. So let's say it's right there. Come on, buddy. Copy. And why don't we paste? Here's the secondary station. Uh, the second stationary plume. This is, wait a second, is that Utah? That's Utah. That, oh, wow, that's weird. That looks like, yeah, Great Salt Lake. And that's coming from Ogden. God knows why there's SO2 being emitted there. Let's see, the other stationary plume was right here, right? So let's copy and go to Google Earth and paste please don't be soda springs do not be soda springs do not be soda springs okay where is this soda springs is up here okay so this is about southeast so that's that's in wyoming so i don't see anything in the area i don't know why so2 is being released there there isn't that large of so2 being released right now thank god but remember, USGS did say, and you know, some of the things they do say, I believe, you know, because some of the things that they do talk about don't have an agenda for. But they do say that with SO2, because there's a hydrothermal system in Yellowstone, the SO2 comes from underground, right? Because the magma chamber is beneath the hydrothermal system. So when the SO2 comes up through the ground and tries to release into the atmosphere, it can be scrubbed by the water. Like, the water can literally scrub the SO2 and cling to it, so that when you have satellite imagery and look up here, you won't see it. That is possible. Alright, so, what's next? Okay, here we got the tilt meters. I am very disappointed they shut down Madison. Except for all, which goes back to 2011, but it doesn't show us much. 
Wow, that's helpful. Thanks, guys. Yeah, one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world. They're taking down most of the graphs. Yeah, lovely. Ain't that professional. Okay, come on. All right, this is Lake Yellowstone. Wow, notice the large shaking going on. Look, from this dot to that dot, look at how wide that is. I'm pretty sure that's, wow. Uh, yeah, look at that right there. Uh, Mary Greeley, I watched one of her videos. I believe she said this was north and this is east. So personally, I believe that if that's true, then if this is north and this is east, then that means if this is going up, that's north. If this is going down, that's south. If this is going up, that's east. If this is going down, it's west. So a lot of ground deformation going on, guys. Large ground deformation. And you can see right here, see from dot to dot, see the width right there? That is wider. That is almost as wide as right here. Actually, no, that's not. That That's way wider than anything. That That's a big spike, guys. That's a big spike in ground deformation. Let's go check the two other tilt meters that they got. Here's Grant, borehole 944 at Grant Village. Seeing the same thing here, a lot of ground moving right now because of those long period tremors. So this does correlate with the activity right now. And notice, 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 notice how it started the other day. All right, let's go look at the time that it started. Let's go. Because I hope you guys remember when I told you it started. Remember how I said on the 26th, around 1900, we're going to say, well, what does that look like? There's the 27th. There's the 26th, let's see, there's one, two, three, four. So 24 divided by four, that's six, so six hours. So six, 12, 18, 24, and remember how I said around 19, around 19, and this is all in UTC time, guys. See, UTC time. So around 19 would be right here. Notice this is when the tremor started. Notice this is when the ground deformation started. Guys, this ties in with this. Guys, the tilt meters tie in with the increase of activity that is showing on all these graphs. I don't have just one piece of data for you guys. I got the tilt meters to back it up. I really do. It really shows a stark difference. It really does. And I'm actually kind of shocked that it does. Same timing, too. Same, same freaking timing. The 26th, around 1800 to 2000. And the 26th, around, there's 6 UTC, 12 UTC, 18 UTC. But if you look up here, see how tiny that is? It definitely started sometime earlier because you can see the graphs, they're increasing. Notice the increase. The whole... The whole day right here, they were increasing. But I just said that they started to reach their peak around 1900. But you could see that they did start a little bit before. But I, I'm, new, I'm not looking at that right now. But you could definitely tell there's an increase at that same exact time. All right. Now, let's check Norris. I still can't believe this is happening, guys. Like, wow. Like, the tilt meters literally do back up what I'm trying to say. My God, a lot of shaking going on recently. Yep, right here. See, same timing. See how it's spread out? Okay, see how it's thin right here? You know, the ground's shaking, but not much. But look at how wide it is right here. And I believe Mary Greeley said this is north and this is east. Look at that. Yeah. Okay, so we just coupled ground deformation with these tremors. Bad, 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 bad. Very bad sign. Very bad sign. No scientist, no one in their right mind can deny what is happening right now. This cannot be surface noise. This cannot be icicles. This cannot be bison. This cannot be wind like USGS and the University of Utah always try to tell us. There is definitely something very concerning going on, guys. This should not be happening at all. But why don't we... Let's go to earthquake. The USGS.gov. I, I, I'm just saying this right now, guys. I have not checked this yet today. I haven't been. I've been focused, focusing on the long period graphs and the short period vertical graphs and the heli plots and the tilt meters. But I have not checked this today. I am guessing there is going to be at least two earthquakes 
on the East Coast or sort of the East Coast, you know, maybe north of Florida or something. Let's say the eastern half of the United States, mainly towards, you know, like New York, Florida, that area. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's go to one day all magnitudes. Oh, well, I eh, I, I was kind of wrong, but hey, there's one. <laughs> there's a 1.2, 7.1 kilometers in depth. I am very surprised there are not more earthquakes, guys. I'm very surprised. This actually might not be a good thing that there's no earthquakes, because that could mean the pressure is building and it's not being released at all. Uh, I thought I saw something bold and red just now. There it is. Why would they make this bold in red? 3.9. 9 kilometers in depth. Oh. Oh. That's right along the fault. Okay, let's zoom out. Come on, buddy, you are so slow. So, so slow. In Iraq? That looks like Iraq. Or it's Iran. 5.0. And we got a little lonely guy down here in 5.7. 113 kilometers north northeast of Bristol Island, South Sandwich Islands. 116 kilometers in depth, which is pretty deep. 1.0 kilometer in depth for this 2.8 up here in Alaska. But there is. Very little earthquakes for what is going on. Except, hey, look at this. What's this right here? 3.0 in Colorado. Wow. Colorado's been getting some interesting activity lately. And also, guys, here is the borehole strain meters for UNAVCO. And this is for Madison. Thank God they did not take this down. C360, this goes by the days of the year. 360th day of the year right now is December 26th. So this is for yesterday. I think they're always a day behind. I think Mary Greeley said that. But remember, remember, remember. Let's let's say it started increasing halfway through the day. Look at the increase right here. You can see a plain increase. Let's click on it. And this shows on the other ones as well. I mean, it's showing on everything, guys. This is no longer just speculation from the seismographs it is showing on spectrographs on tilt meters and seismographs guys we got three points of data all confirming the same exact thing i've been saying this activity here guys is real this is not some joke this is not coming from above the air or whatever it's not coming from the surface not electronic noise nothing this is an actual waveform, so it can't be electronic interference on any of these. It shows picking up at the same exact time with the tilt meters proving it. I am still in shock, guys. Let's go back and refresh, and it's still going strong. Looks like it's starting to diminish just a little bit, but it's still going strong. Very strong. Well, guys, thank you for putting up with how long my videos are. Um, I might put out another video soon about this with an update. I believe there's something else I wanted to show you guys. Uh, but, I, uh, man, I can't think today. It's just everything's so frantic today. You know, my, both my kids are sick right now. Both my kids are sick. And we got this going on. And it's – I'm freaking out a little bit because of how strong these are. Yeah, guys, Wow. This is South Dakota. Okay, do you guys want to see a normal day with South Dakota? I want to show you a normal day at South Dakota. What a normal day should look like. Here you go, guys. This is a normal day. And if you don't believe I'm using the same graph, if you do not believe that, then I'm going to zoom in right here because there are some people that don't believe me. Look up here in the corner. RSSD. SPZ. I-U-O-O, -O, Rapid City, South Dakota, ANSS, short period vertical, December 20th, 2017. This is a normal day. This is what 
all the graphs should look like. And this is what all the graphs do look like on a normal day, guys. You know, we got some seismic events here. Maybe some quarry blasts. This is a normal day. Notice there's no jagged edges at all. Okay. Now, same graph. Same graph. Let's go to today. And would you look at that. And by the way, guys, remember this is showing on all the graphs. This is showing on virtually every single Montana Tech graph and virtually every single ANSS station in the entire United States, guys. This isn't just showing on some. This is showing on all ANSS stations over the entire country. Look at this. This is the same thing. RSSD, SPZ, IU, OO, Rapid City, South Dakota, ANSS, Sharp Eared Vertical. Same graph, guys. Same graph. Look at that. Do you not see those jagged up and down movements? And it is now correlated with the tilt meters, the spectrographs, and the neighboring seismographs showing this is an underground event. There's no doubt about it. Because this is what you're taught in seismology school. You're supposed, especially as a scientist, you don't just use one form of data. Oh no. You're supposed to correlate these events with the same exact events on other seismographs. And then you're supposed to go to tilt meters, look for ground deformation, and go to the spectrographs, and look for gas emissions as well. There's no gas, em there, you know, there are some gas emissions in the area, but nothing concerning. But if you look at the tilt meters and look at everything that's going on in the seismographs, they all correlate with each other at the same exact times. That brings us to the conclusion, because we're out for the truth no matter where it leads. This brings us to the conclusion that whatever this is, is coming from underground. The plate must be shifting in some way. Okay, so the last graph that I showed with zero activity, a normal day on the same graph was the 20th, I believe, right? So let's go to the 20th. Okay, here is the 20th. Now, let's go back to the other one. This is a normal day. This is a day with no tremors at all. Now, I'm sorry I'm repeating myself, but... I really got to get this through to people. And let's go back and forward and back and forward. This is the 20th. This is a normal day. This is today. Normal day, tremor day. Normal day, tremor day. Do you guys not see that? So people can't tell me that this is normal activity because it's not. And it's showing on every single graph and every single one of these heli plots. Except the ones on the Eastern Hemisphere. I mean, hell, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Let's see. There's Alaska. There's Oregon. There's Philippines. There's Florida. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Germany. See? See the slight little increase around the same exact time? Uh, see the thickening of the lines? Here, let's zoom in. What? Wait, it won't show me the picture? Why won't it show me the picture? Wait a second. What? Mariana Islands is working. Let's go to Germany. For some reason, Germany's not work working anymore. God knows why. That's weird. Why did Germany stop working? Well, where's Norway? Here's Norway right here. Let's click on Norway. Okay. See this, guys? And I have the data. I even have the data when this first started. So if you guys want to remember, email me. And uh, yeah, see, those are those tremors. Well, guys, I got to go, and I'll be putting out another video soon with an update. But remember, please, if you want the data, please email me. Please. I do not want you to take my word for it. I really, really, really want other people to even create their own channels. I would like you guys to create your own channels and to go out and to do your own research and to dig for yourself. And I put all my resources in the description box below. Every single link that I ever use ever in any of my videos in the description box below. And if I'm ever wrong about that or if I leave something out or if I'm incorrect or if you have constructive criticism, please leave a comment in the, in the uh, comment box below. Please. Because I'm not in this for YouTube, guys. I'm in this to tell people about the whole damn North American plate is moving. This is not normal, guys. Well, guys... I'm still freaking out officially, but I got to go take care of my kids, and I will keep a very, very close eye on this as it keeps going strong. Uh, let's see. It doesn't look like it's diminishing. It looks like it's diminishing just a little, but I don't know how long this is going to last. I'm guessing it could last for another 24 hours. Well, guys, I very much thank you for you guys' support, and 
God bless and have a great new year. Let us hope that this comes to nothing. But the fact that there's no earthquakes and the fact that something is definitely moving show well there are earthquakes but not large ones like i thought there would be with this much movement for this much movement i thought that there would be at least like you know like a 6.0 or a 7.0 hell even an 8.0 but the pressure is building so much and the thing i'm concerned about two areas actually three the cascadia subduction zone mount rainier and yellowstone if the plate is moving this drastically it will affect those it is only a matter of time until i get a massive quake here just off our coast here because i live right next to seattle and it'd be pretty bad but have no fear guys the spirit of god or god does not give us the spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind be safe guys do not be scared this should not scare you at all please do some digging for yourself if you guys need anything email me please peace out guys